We should be recording now. So we'll dive into the app staff and uh, state level strategies we came up with from the students and young professionals. Uh, the first one we thought of was a discussion board. Uh, it could be a platform for young members to pose questions to more experienced members and garner feedback. Uh, this could foster networking connections and the timely dissemination of knowledge, as could a uh, mentorship program where incoming students and professionals are given the opportunity to sign up for a mentorship. Um, so like a mentee could select his specific interests and then they'd get matched with an experienced professional who is willing to share and uh, volunteer his time, um, sharing their insights in that particular field of study and get matched up. So this uh, again could foster some networking and even possible job opportunities while allowing for that um, important dissemination of knowledge from one generation to the next. Um, another idea we had, and I know uh, Tom already does this with his Leadership Nature uh, podcast, which I've enjoyed listening to some episodes of, but a uh, podcast that could either be done at the app staff or even the national level. Um, I thought we had a great market for this, especially in the student young professional group, as we have many students, say, between classes, headphones in their ears. And uh, some of them probably listen to the podcast already. And then several of us foresters are in our trucks. They probably have Bluetooth. And this would uh, be a great way to um, get caught up with uh, either, say, the marketing uh, news of the day or scientific studies that have recently came out or even important announcements like the Trailblazer in uh, podcast form. I did some research into this, and it could either be posted publicly, say, to a Spotify and Apple Music, SoundCloud, or it could be through like an RSS feed. Uh, I'd have to do some research into how it works, but uh, where it'd be restricted to people um, that have a certain password and therefore could be just allowed to members. Um, if we were to go ahead and do this, obviously the format could be up for uh, debate, but um, I wouldn't want it to be a big burden on whoever is providing the podcast or hosting it, um, but also I want it to be engaging enough to where members want to come back for it and don't forget about it. So perhaps maybe one 30 minute podcast per week, that may be even uh, a big ask of whoever's hosting, but um, that was one idea we had, Greg. Um, diving down to the chapter level for our students and young professionals, uh, a couple ideas I came up or we came up with were um, field trips, uh, where chapters could coordinate trips to, uh, say, mills, state and national parks, or historical landmarks. I know some of our chapters do this already, but just kind of um, building this into our yearly calendars. Uh, this would help foster learning about our local areas and also provide camaraderie with the group um, where they share similar experiences and can talk about that at meetings and elsewhere. And then uh, camping trips. I uh, grew up Boy Scout, and I'm sure many of us grew up camping and uh, first garnered our love, uh, our love for the woods from experiences like these. So these overnight meetings could provide for food and fellowship, uh, while also echoing uh, what the great outdoors has to offer to all of us. Um, all three of our states are certainly blessed with several state parks that offer camping, and I know we have a uh, a couple of national park or three national parks as well. Um, and some of these even offer group camping. So we could use these uh, weekend getaways and uh, kind of long meetings. And I'll hand it over to Sammy now for our recommended strategies on mid to late career professionals. Take it away. All right, thank you, Seth. Um, the mid to late career professionals group uh, makes up about 30% of app staff membership, uh, and it represents approximately 340 to 65 year olds. Um, this group is typically settled into their careers, um, but they can still gain a lot from SAF. Uh, this group also has a lot to offer the society in terms of experience and leadership. However, there are many uh, forestry professionals in this age group that are either not SAF members uh, or who are members and are not actively engaged. Um, we believe there are several strategies on the national, state, and chapter levels that will help retain and involve members in this age demographic. On the national uh, level, we, we've come up with three um, areas we think we should focus on. 
uh, membership dues and structure, um, member connectivity, and uh, CFEs. <clears throat> so the first one, membership dues and structure. Uh, Seth spoke to this a little bit um, in terms of a payment structure. Um, and when we're talking about this for the mid to late career professionals, um, we, we believe that these, these members probably do have the means to make a one-time payment every year, an annual payment. Um, we just think that the, the monthly payment plan uh, or structure um, leads to a, a, a perception thing that would keep people or make them more likely to want to make that payment. And um, lots of big companies and uh, other organizations are doing it, and it seems to keep people around a lot. So in terms of this demographic, it's mostly a perception thing um, rather than a, a, necess a necessity. So that's where we're coming from uh, with the, the monthly membership payment. Um, <clears throat> member connectivity in terms of meeting uh, or connecting people via the websites that we use, SAF websites. Um, many members join or retain a uh, membership for connectivity. And on a national level, it's hard to meet or ever be in person with people. So we believe that the, the website needs to do a better job of uh, getting people connected or letting people find other members. So we think uh, SAF should develop a search tool on the website uh, to be able to find members, um, find chapter leaders, just be able to connect the people within SAF uh, more so than we are currently doing. Um, I know that you can find some chapter information but uh, going on SAF website, it's not, it's not the greatest thing ever, and it could definitely be improved. Um, we think we could develop a LinkedIn um, accounts specifically for members to be able to connect employees and potential uh, employers um, and just provide a better place for people to get connected uh, via the website nationally. And then finally, for the national level, um, CFEs, it's a major incentive for a lot of people, especially in this age group. Um, we think that that process could be improved on. Um, a lot of people have found a, a way to get around uh, getting CFEs without being a member because um, you can get a CFE for $30, I believe. And then if you needed three credits a year, that's $90, which is less than the membership fee. So we think that an increase in the cost of non-membership CFEs would lead to more people uh, joining and becoming members of SAF. On the state level, uh, we have three different categories, uh, website resources, educational outreach, and professional development. Um, again, with the website resources, it's kind of uh, some of the same stuff, except on the, um, on the state level, we think that the SAF website could be uh, better used for sharing information uh, between members in the states, um, chapter members sharing of information, what they're doing at their meetings, um, what kind of resources they use. And we just think that the website could do a better job of um, connecting people and talking and, and allowing them to share their information. Um, also, we think that in terms of website resources, can, um, having more information about your specific groups in the state, just when they're meeting, what they're doing, what they're talking about, where they're going, that kind of stuff could be uh, shared better on the website and uh, it, would, it would help people and 
these some of these groups that aren't meeting as much and aren't as involved can get ideas from other groups and we think that'll help um, with involvement and then educational outreach resources is uh, a little on the same lines um, it's a, a priority for many SAF members and uh, many of these members feel like they have something to give back um, in, in the mid to late career group. And so we feel like they should embrace programs more often like your project learning tree, uh, your teacher tours, uh, just getting more involved in the educational aspect of SAF. And we think that would uh, help involve members more and, and provide a different group of people than your more traditional foresters to get involved as well. Um, we also think that SAF could provide uh, lesson plans, flashcards, uh, posters, and promotional material to, to teachers and students, um, especially in science-based classes all the way from elementary school up to college. Um, it would be a good way to promote SAF and it, as well get people involved in the, um, in the forestry or environmental line of things that we do. So <clears throat> uh, finally for the state level professional development, um, more professional development opportunities at the state level would likely and, and prove the involvement of members in this age group. Uh, a prime example of this is the Leadership Academy and what we did, people are now involved um, because they were probably sent to their, by their work, but either way, there's more involvement now. And we think it's because there was opportunity of something like the Leadership Academy. And if SAF could provide more of these things at the state, state levels, uh, we think that that would increase involvement and um, retention of members. Uh, we think APSAF could provide more networking events. Um, this would open more employment opportunities and connect members across the region. Um, we think events could be held in person alongside state division meetings and or virtually. Um, just giving more opportunities for people to get together um, and, and meet and, and just have more uh, of a stage to get involved. And then on the chapter level, <clears throat> um, we have informal casual meetings, volunteerism and outreach. Uh, we feel like at, at the smallest level that this is what people are really looking to do. Um, they wanna get together. Uh, many people in the forestry environmental uh, realm like to like to meet face to face and they like to talk and they they like to um, hang out with one another. We think that uh, to, to get more people involved on this level, they're gonna need to um, have events where people can just be more social, hang out with one another. Um, we said we, that members could have more meetings at hunt clubs or breweries, keep shooting cornhole, and, and even more family friendly stuff than that as well. Um, and that would get more of these members involved, especially since uh, a lot of these members in this group have children. Um, just providing an opportunity for people to, to come together and kind of make a family out of it um, is more likely to keep people involved. <clears throat> and then volunteerism and outreach. Uh, many local chapters give their time in a variety of ways. Um, however, some chapters only meet on a regular schedule and become disconnected from the community. Um, providing more volunteering opportunities uh, would, would boost um, engagement and help connect SAF to the community, which would also be um, good press for SAF and, and be a way to promote the organization. Um, some examples of ways they could do this, uh, adopt a, a highway, trail maintenance, trash pickup, firewood delivery, sealing giveaways, uh, anything like that where, where SAF 
uh, on a local level could be getting involved. And then um, some chapters do this already, but offering scholarships to students, um, especially in this age group, a lot of people feel like they want to give back. So this would be a good way. And, and a lot of members in this age group have the means to, to at least do a little bit of this and creating a scholarships uh, program for students seeking a, a degree in the forestry or environmental field. And then um, it provides a good way to give back and gets more people involved. Um, mid to late career SAF members have a lot to offer SAF, APSAF and the local chapters. Um, their engagement and continued involvement contends with more life conflicts and seems to falter. Uh, we feel that the ideas we've mentioned will retain and increase involvement of the members in this demographic. And I'm gonna pass it over to Tara. Great, thank you, Sammy. Okay, forestry as a profession has changed a great deal over the, the past few decades. The rise in environmental concerns, advancing technology, evolving forest product use, and, and just the demographics of foresters themselves have all made one thing really clear, and that is that the traditional forester is not, not the only person that's, that's out there practicing forestry now. And this section is going to focus on some strategies that, that might help improve the involvement and engagement of some of those non-traditional forestry professionals. Um, next slide. So at the SAF national level, um, we feel it might be appropriate to take a closer look at the definition of, of who can be an SAF member. So bear with me while I get a little wordy here. Um, there's not really a clear way to define it without uh, just laying it out there. So SAF states that all forestry and natural resource management students and graduates are eligible for membership. Further defining that forestry as a science and art and business of creating, managing, conserving forests and associated resources in a sustainable manner to meet goals, needs, and values. And then also goes on to define natural resource management um, as being within the broad field of forestry. And this broad field encompasses things like biological, quantitative, managerial, and social sciences that are applied to forest management as well as conservation. So we feel it may be time to, to revisit these definitions. Um, it's important to find a proper balance between member inclusiveness and then defining how the organization defines itself as well as its members. So we suggest being more inclusive of things like work experience, um, certifications, um, and, and more varied degrees, uh, things like environmental law, uh, environmental policy, hydrology. Um, there's a lot of things out there that are part of the forestry industry that would benefit SAF as a whole. And um, the more people we connect with, the stronger of an organization we could be. Um, next slide, please. We had a few ideas at the, the APSAF um, and, and state level even. Um, to increase pr participation at those levels, we, one main thing that we would like to do is see more cross-disciplinary events, um, things like co-hosting and co-sponsoring events with, with other organizations. And um, along with these events, offering very professional certifications in addition to just, um, or in addition to just CFEs alone, um, things like Project Learning Tree, ProLogger, um, NWCG Wildlife Fire, uh, having more participation on those fronts um, might entice more people to, to take notice and, and be willing to participate. Um, Co-hosting and co-sponsoring events can, can definitely improve relationships and then also opportunities and, and engagement from some of these non-traditional uh, members. 
Um, we also have a few ideas around membership payment plans. And, and I know the other two groups have uh, also mentioned quite a few ideas on these payment plans as well. Um, we have a few that that we thought might be uh, specific to, to this level, to the APSAF level. Um, one thing being geographic uh, membership tiers. And currently you can become a member at the SAF national level. And then those dues would then flow down to APSAF as well as the local chapters. We propose that maybe it would be a good idea to have a membership tier that was, was only the APSAF level. So, Maybe people aren't interested in, in becoming members at the national level and paying a price quite that high. We could make an, a lower price at the APSAF level, and then that would also flow down to the uh, chapter level as well. That may be more enticing to some people. Um, another option for the uh, payment plans would be uh, quarterly or monthly payment plans. That way this could spread out that financial burden, you know, throughout the year, not, not be as impactful at, at one time. And if we were to couple that with something like automatic payroll deductions to make it easier and, and more efficient, that may be enticing as well. Um, Corporate membership is another idea that, that we could pursue that would make it easy for companies to offer a group membership for their employees. And this is something that could potentially promote long-term membership as well, because it could be a auto renewal type situation and that may, in, we make it easy and people won't have to think about it. They can just automatically be a member the next year without having to fill out any paperwork or, or make more payments. Um, this also could tap into that demographic of potential members within the forestry industry that are not necessarily foresters, but they work in the industry and we would welcome them as being members. Um, this could make it easier for them to, uh, to see what we're all about. Um, another really important idea that we had was a membership sponsor program. Um, there's an understandable concern of dilution if the membership requirements or the definition uh, becomes too lax. And to help mitigate some of those concerns, we had an idea to offer uh, member sponsorships. So if you have a member that is, or you have a potential member that is not a uh, formally trained forester, um, but would like to be part of the organization, they could have a reference letter and um, essentially be nominated by a current member and um, kind, of, kind of like vouching for somebody, if you will. And this of course could be you know, terminated at any time by the referring member. Um, it, it of course would not apply if that, uh, that person decided to leave the forestry industry, um, you know, pursuing a different career path. They of course would not um, fall into that category anymore and that, that membership could be then terminated. Um, next slide, please. Um, actually one back. There were, yeah, we had so many good ideas at this level, we had to have two slides. Um, so this is, this, is the fun, this is the fun part here, uh, marketing and outreach. Um, we had quite a few ideas around, you know, building up that forestry brand, the image, um, selling forestry, if you will. Um, we, we feel like, I'm, I'm gonna start with enthusiasm, energy, and inclusion because to me, that's the most important thing. If you have people who are uh, very excited about their profession, they're proud to be foresters, they are proud for you know, what we do, and also as an organization, what, what APSAF stands for, um, that, that kind of enthusiasm is contagious. And so it's important to, to promote that and look for opportunities to get that message and that sentiment out to to everybody right and so we we brainstormed a few ideas here um 
around marketing. And so guest lecturing, uh, specifically at the student level, right? So guest lecturing in um, classes that are not forestry classes, things like GIS classes, history classes, agricultural classes, um, getting out there and showing those students how forestry relates to the field that they're interested in, um, how it overlaps, and planning that bug and getting them interested in forestry and just getting the conversation started. Um, another thing is involving athletes. At, on campuses, um, well, just in the world in general, right? Athletes tend to be role models. People look up to them. Um, they, they tend to be, uh, you know, high energy and have a good outgoing personality. And so it, it's a good idea to capture some of that. Invite them to our meetings. Um, invite them to, to meetings where they can learn what forestry is about as well. Take photo opportunities. Um, look for any opportunity to get them to promote forestry with us. Um, because if, if they are role models to people, and they are talking about forestry, that could entice people to uh, look at forestry a little differently. And then it's really important to look at vision and change as well. Um, having a clear vision of where forestry not only is currently, but where it's headed is vital to being able to properly sell forestry. Um, selling forestry is a delicate mix of convincing people of the importance of it, but also uh, educating people about you know, what we do, how we affect the uh, community, the environment, what SAF stands for. And uh, the only way we can do that is to, is to get out there and, and promote it. And um, like I said, start, start that, that conversation. But without a clear vision, it's, it's hard to, um, to really move forward with, and, and be able to promote it. So. Um, I think that that's possibly one of the, the, the most important things we can do. Um, okay, next slide. At the chapter level, we, we had one idea that, that we really were excited about. This, we, we applied this practically with one of our local chapters and um, it, it, seemed to, it seemed to work. So we wanted to talk a little bit about um, having committees committees to promote uh, community outreach and community engagement. Um, one of the biggest barriers for people getting involved, um, time, uh, money, which we mentioned earlier, but, but definitely time. Um, time is a, is a big barrier. Um, if, you, if you have committees within your local chapters or you know, even at the state level, that alleviate some of that time burden by sharing the load. And uh, with our local chapter, the Croatan chapter, we actually um, were able to do a lot of things over the past two years, even during a you know crazy pandemic time when we didn't have as much uh, involvement from our members as we normally would have. We still were able to accomplish many projects because we had a um, community outreach committee and there were enough people on the committee that we could we could share the load. We could share the planning and organizing and idea generation and and overall just reaching out uh, to different groups and and finding ways to to get involved. And we we were able to do and adopt a highway contract. We did several projects with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and I think that if all chapters could. Um, you know, look at this model and potentially form their own committees, it would take that burden, that time burden off of one or two uh, members, you know, that may have a leadership role in the chapter. Um, it would take that, that load off of them. And it would also give other members of the chapter ownership and, um, you know, that feeling of, of truly being involved in, in the planning and executing of, of different ideas. So. I think that if we could take a look at some of these things and, and implement some of these uh, strategies, we may be successful in not only getting the attention of the non-traditional uh, members, but 
bringing in new and uh, improved ideas on, on how we can get things done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tara. Uh, so this idea, this next idea came to us from outside of uh, SAF, but I thought I should uh, capture it here. Um, so while it's clear that membership fees are uh, important uh, to keep on running the publications and the activities that SAF and APSAP and the chapter levels have, uh, we found that we could perhaps have a, a slight discount off that membership rate if students and young professionals were willing to volunteer a set amount of hours um, toward a community project or uh, something in their communities, or for those mid to late career professionals volunteering their time and expertise and presenting to the group uh, their knowledge. Um, so just something to think about there. Um, next. Great. We had a few broad themes that uh, kind of were overarching between our different groups. Uh, one of those was membership monthly dues. Um, taking that from the annual payment structure down to the monthly one, and then informal, varied, and uh, kind of unique chapter meetings. Uh, so I talked about in the Student Young Professional Group, the uh, camping and the field trips, and we also talked about maybe going and doing like cornhole or going to breweries. Um, our members just want to have fun, uh, have some camaraderie, meet with each other. Uh, they want to learn, and so the field trips would provide that. Uh, but those are just some of the broad themes that we found um, between our different um, groups. So I'll open the floor up to questions and uh, thank you for letting us present. So Tom, I'm not sure what the, um, the process is here, but um, I have Lots of, I mean, th these are all great ideas. I'm excited yeah. about a lot yeah. of them. Buddy, it's I'm Dan. I uh, just want to. What's up, Dan? Uh, the uh, process is up to the group in terms of the questions and answers, uh, Susan. Did you want to continue, Susan? Well, I didn't know. I was waiting on Dan. Did we lose Dan? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sounded yeah. like we did. Okay. I'm having some trouble with the uh, bandwidth out here. Hopefully that's better. Any better? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I uh, moved to a different location. So I'm not sure how much you got in my previous remarks. This will sound wonderful for whoever's listening to the recording to go over this again. But uh, first off, well done. Uh, really insightful comments. I really appreciate all the work that everybody's put into this. So thank you, first and foremost. Um, I've got several questions, but I'm just going to pose one right now, which is uh, Virginia is considering uh, collapsing the number of chapters, uh, which will be less chapters, more uh, service area. And there's different schools of thought on that, but one of the impetus for the conversation was having a difficult time getting folks into leadership roles, uh, recycling, you know, leaders through those positions, um, you know, less membership to serve in leadership roles and so forth. And maybe we just need fewer chapters. Um, without telling you my opinions on that, I'm just kind of curious how you as current and uh, also the future of the membership of SAF uh, feel about that kind of a concept? What would your thoughts be on that? Um, would you deal with declining membership by reducing the number of chapters? I'll agree that uh, it is tough filling in the leadership roles at the, I know at the chapter level and probably at the state level as well. Uh, we're having a tough time in Crotan chapter filling a chair elect at the moment. Um, decentralizing those, uh, so with Croatan chapter only over a certain amount of counties, and if it spreads out from that, it may be 
tough for all those members to meet when they get to meet in person at a centralized uh, area. Um, and so keeping it somewhat local, um, I've enjoyed it that way, but I, I could see pros and cons to either side. I appreciate your reaction to that, Seth. The, uh, now I'll share my view on it, which is I'm strongly opposed to reducing the number of chapters because I think fellowship, networking, uh, many of the things that you all have described are important reasons for why people stay engaged in the profession. And if we have farther distances between these types of meetings or more virtual meetings instead of face-to-face -face meetings, um, I think it's going to be uh, further discouraging or further discouragement for folks to, to stay engaged because it'll make it more difficult to do something that is an important reason why they stay involved. So it's an ongoing conversation, but I was very interested in y'all's opinions. Thank you. Hey, Susan, you want to finish your, your question from before, your, your thoughts? Well, I just have a couple of thoughts. First of all, um, thank you all for, for what you've put forth here. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, some great new ideas that, that I think we, we truly needed um, to, to, to move APSAF forward. Um, so I, I just want to pose a couple of questions, and these are big, big picture questions that, that we'll need to answer before we can go forward with some of these things. And the first one that I want to pose, and, and again, there's, there's not, you know, this is something for you to think about, is, you know, is SAF, when you're talking about, you know, the non-forestry and engaging non-forestry professionals into SAF, which, you know, I'm, I'm with Dan, I'm not going to give my opinions on that. Uh, but I want to, to pose to you, is SAF a professional organization? Which leads to, is forestry a professional organization? You know, if, if we start including a lot of non-traditional foresters in SAF, do we lose our identity? Um, or do we reinvent that identity? So, so think about that as a big picture question. And, and that also somewhat leads to, I believe, Tara was... Uh, Tara, were, were you the one that was talking about the non-traditional? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, one of your recommendations was thinking about including others uh, with other experience, such as wildlife um, and hydrology. And so my question there for you to think about becomes, um, how then do we start competing with other organizations such as the Wildlife Society or the Hydrological Society of America, things like that. So, and, and if we do, then how do we compete and gain those, those people as well? Because if, you know, if in fact membership and, and dues, just, you know, the, the financial part of it is a consideration, particularly for those early, early career, how do we entice them to either be a member of both or get them over to our side and perhaps, you know, um, show them that there's value, more value here than say the Wildlife Society. I know the Wildlife Society struggled with this many years ago. Um, sadly, probably before a good number of y'all were born, I will say. Um, and, 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 and because of that, you know, they're, they're a larger organization now, but that also makes them appear as if they were less of a professional society. And I'm not saying they're, that their members are, are not professionals, but just think about those questions because if we wanna start opening this up, then we become competition for others and, and how do we set ourselves apart? Um, so those are just some, some thoughts that I, I wanted to, to share with you. Um, and it sounds like, so for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm be taking over as APSAF chair, uh, I think in a couple of weeks or so, if I'm not mistaken. And so it sounds like I've got some volunteers for committees that I need to fill. So I'll be in touch with some of you guys later on. As soon as I get that, that uh, participation list and contact information from Tom. But, but y'all did have some fantastic ideas that I think are, are really good. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we can roll some of these ideas into the new strategic plan that we, we're finishing up right now 
and that we will be presenting to the executive committee at the APSAF winter meeting for um, to vote on. Because uh, I can see so many of your ideas that really further that strategic plan to achieve our, our overall mission. So that's that's all I had to say, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for pointing me out. It's really the group's show, and and they've just uh, just blown this out of the water. I uh, I mostly wanted I have questions about specific things that I think they uh, this would take too much time here today. Um, Maybe a couple of things about your your ideas. Probably as you talked as a group, you might have uh, said, boy, it would be great if uh, APSAF took this forward this way. Uh, you know, you guys, so you guys might want to do some popcorn pop up and say how, how you might have been thinking we could forward these ideas. Um, this might be a good question that'll uh, help you uh, at your next presentation with the executive committee, which uh, I should say, we really appreciate. This was out of the scope of what we asked you to do, and we asked you to do a lot, is, is what are the uh, low, where, where's the low hanging fruit, do you think? You know, what, what would be some things that would be the easiest, fastest things to do? And maybe what would be the highest leverage things to do, the most important things to do? And I think I saw that, uh, as Seth said, well, here's some things that crossed across the boundaries that maybe that would, if you wanted to add to that to your next presentation, or we'll just talk with you later. Um, but if you have an input about how to take this forward, I wanted to come back and congratulate you uh, more specifically. Your ideas were, were fresh. They were expansive. Uh, you invented new terms I've, ne I don't, I've never heard before. An overnight meeting, a corporate sponsored member. Uh, my mind is bending. Uh, you were eloquent uh specific and, and creative and um i'm dying to know and there's probably not enough time to know now but i will come back and ask y'all um was this project too much uh was it worth it uh how much time did it take what did you learn so uh i may with uh, any patience remaining from you all come back with some questions like like that but that's all I have for the moment. And I do appreciate this so much. I'll, I'll sign off for now, mute for now. Thank you, Tom. And yeah, we can expand on those uh, items there that kind of cross the bound, uh, cross between our different uh, groups. Um, going for the next meeting. I have a question for the non-Leadership Academy members for the Executive Committee meeting. We have a, a more abridged time frame for that presentation. Um, are there any points or any, you know, any kind of format that you, you would see as most important to share during that meeting uh, so that our presenters can kind of key in on to specific parts of their presentations? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that question. Um, so one thing that I would think that would be beneficial is if you can, you have some, some points across all the groups that were, that were common. And so I would, I would bring, I would highlight those points first, because as Tom was kind of going back to saying, they may not be the low hanging fruit, but they're the things that if you do that, these, those particular things, it can affect everybody across that staff instead of one of those specific groups. Um, and so that's something that we may be able to look at if implementing quicker. And then some of your ideas for leadership engagement or, or recruiting more leadership or how, how to take that burden off. Uh, I think you uh, talked about a committee for outreach and engagement um, to help reduce those burdens, but also in that, and, and you've not seen the strategic plan, but, but that actually ties into our strategic plan and that we need to have more of that engagement. And so that, that type of committee to identify those engagement opportunities, disseminate that information to our members. Um, and so they know, oh, the, well, this is going on so I can go do it now um, and take that burden from them off of, you know, trying to figure it out on their own. Um, and so that would, I would abbreviate that in, in those types of ways and, and structure it a little different um, so that it's big, broader categories. And, and, you know, mention, you know, you looked at it at those three levels, 
And if these three levels combine, these are the things that, that also had in common. Um, and how we can utilize each of those three groups to, to meet those objectives that you had. Does, you. Does, does that help, Greg? Absolutely. I think that will help, them, help us a lot. Yeah, appreciate that. Tom, Tom, I'd like to chime in and and uh, and everyone thank you to the group for for the outstanding amount of work that you've put in and thought that you've put in it. Uh, I've put a, a good bit of thought in the same subject for a number of years, and and I really appreciate the the work and ideas that you've uh, come up with, and, and look forward to talking more at the executive committee. Uh, meeting. Uh, one thing I, I would uh, like, uh, just a couple of questions that uh, we probably won't have time to answer here, but think about between now and the executive committee meeting is how we can change the APSAF meetings to make them more attractive to accomplish what we're after in terms of uh, member uh, engagement and recruitment. What, what do we need to change about those meetings or is there something we can change about those meetings uh, to accomplish that uh, in the way of uh, the speakers? And I, I know you mentioned some inspirational speakers uh, who identify who those people are, who, who are those speakers that would inspire you to uh, be more engaged in, in SAF? And uh, so that, that's one question. And another question, uh, I have is how how do you view SAF in the context of all of the other competing forestry entities in APSAF, such as state forestry associations, the Association of Consulting Foresters, uh, Longleaf Alliance, Tree Farmer, all of these other organizations that are sort of competing for the time and energy of professional foresters. What, what does SAF need to do to be competitive with those organizations? And, and what separates SAF from uh, those types of forestry organizations? Um, so if we could, could think about that, you certainly share anything now, but, but certainly between now and the executive committee, you know, be, be thinking about that a little bit. Um, and, uh, I was interested in you know, the price of membership was mentioned several times, um, but I, I didn't hear as much about value. And and so, what what are your ideas about if if is price the issue uh, for membership, or or do you think value for that price is more of an issue? Uh, so I'd be curious to hear your your thoughts about that and again you can you can share some now but uh or or, or at the executive committee but again i want to thank you for your your thoughts and energy and time spent on this appreciate it very much and and look forward to hearing more about this with you okay. susan do the uh, these uh, folks know how much time they have at the executive committee meeting to present everything that uh, they're going to present. We do have that on the agenda. Tom, do you remember the exact time frame? It was like 20 minutes or 20 minutes and 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So you've got a lot to, <laughs> you had an hour to do this or 45 minutes to do this. So you've got, in addition to what you want to present, you've been asked to uh, include some other things. You got to work, really work hard to get that down into 20 minutes. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you, like a, a 10 day turnaround isn't realistic to answer these questions. And I, I recognize mm -hmm. this being major issues and major questions to get answered. And it's, it's not gonna be in the scope of this group to do that in that time yeah. frame. Um, uh, I think these are, you know, I think I've seen some uh, allusions to like, how do we carry these ideas forward in the future? And let's say that something gets stood up that is a body that gets these kind of ideas expanded upon or kind of come an implementation type uh, approach, then I think we can start answering some of those questions, looking at those questions in depth, but that's not gonna be the, the scope of this group uh, for the next 10 days. No, I think you're gonna have to, to, to keep it to, you know, to what you found, you, you know, your yeah. initial report, yeah. I think um, you can take it as a compliment that, oh, excuse me, Susan, 
That's that, okay. I was uh, just going to say, Greta, if, you know, and if you have questions over the next few days before the meeting, if you want to reach out to me, um, you, you know, please feel free to email me. Uh, Tom can get you my information or I'll type it in the chat pod for you. Thanks, I was just, my, my thought was quick. Uh, take it as a compliment that this has stirred up uh, bigger questions, more questions, you know, deeper dives. Uh, magnificent. Once again, thank you.